Hi, welcome to the Nissan Sentra conversion to an electric car. My name is Jose Barriga and this is the next video in the series. And this time I want to show you my charging station that I created for the car. Uh, I made progress screen the charging station and the first thing I did was to search online for the NEMA uh, connector types uh, that I wanted to use. They are different in the sense that some of them will max up 15 amps, 20 amps, 30 amps and depending on the charger that you have you have to select the right connector. In my case my uh, connector, my charger handles up to 20 amps so anything that is was 20 amps or less was going to work very well so I, I picked from this and also using the guide of the type of connector that my charger had I, I selected the NEMA 620 connector is, and that's NEMA NEMA -E -E uh, 6 dash 20. And I'm going to show you what I did for my charger now. You just basically take your your uh, fuse box, and what you do is, since I'm going to charge at 220 volts, you have to take the power from the two input main input lines, so you have two charge lines into your output so you take basically take the orange cable is my cable and I put it here into a separate fuse box you get the cable into each one of these uh, switches and then I'm just bringing this uh, connector here for my for my car this is the NEMA 620 connector and it's a 250 volts you see that it's a little different than the regular uh, plug that we use which is the NEMA 615 because 615 is 120 volts and 620 is 250 volts I have the flexibility though to still charge to 110 volts which is one like this uh, but it's going to be too slow for me so I don't really need to charge to 110 or 120 volts in my house I can charge to 250 now this is uh, dangerous stuff only venture to do this yourself if you know what you're doing I have been to study about three years of electricity in school so I know what I'm doing but this is dangerous and can kill you so if you try to do something like this it's better that you have an electrician unless you have the training for doing this yourself so my charger uh, this is this is the extension that I did to carry in the car, and these are the NEMA 620 also charger or connectors, and uh, that's the same kind of connector that my charger came originally with. So this should work pretty good for me with uh, stay with the NEMA 620. But in those places where I need to charge from 120 volts, uh, I just did myself a little conversion cable. These chargers are very flexible in the sense that you can put in the same plug 120 volts or 240 volts and it will automatically adjust to whatever voltage you are applying. So I can I can plug my NEMA 620 here and then use this for a regular plug in any any outlet as long as it's uh, 20 amps of capacity and it will allow me to charge the car pretty much anywhere. Now, in Tampa, they just started installing public car charging stations uh, this month, which is uh, July of 2011. There's not too much point for me to use their standard industry standard plug, which is J1772, yet, because there's not much where I really can plug yet. There will be in the near future, so I'm going to have to change the NEMA 620 for a J1772. But uh, those plugs are really expensive because the SAI industry is, is copyrighting them, so you have to pay royalties to sell the J1772, which I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It is really expensive. That's why you don't see these connectors made in China yet or not, not cheaper. And the, 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 the female, the male part is like a hundred. $25 and the, the, the female part 
is like uh, I've seen it from $400 and even though they add a little bit of safety to the connection like they disconnect the power before you unplug or, or plug uh, I think it's too much it just you know 400 in one side and like $120 in the other side just to make a connection it doesn't make sense to me it's too expensive for a connection so I, and I don't see anything wrong with a regular I'll have to go that way because that's what the industry is going to and if I want to charge in public stations I'll have to have one of those but I'm not ready to do that yet um, also the charging stations as you can see they are very affordable and very easy to do and I'm surprised they charge you like uh, anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars to charge to, to install one of these in your house and all they're, all they're really doing is installing a plug and it's just too expensive I, I spend like hundred and twenty dollars in everything that I need to charge including the cable and the converter so this all was like hundred and twenty dollars compared to the minimum a thousand dollars for an official charging station which is just a plug is is beyond my understanding um, okay so what I'm going to show you now is what I've done with the with the motor so I started installing the batteries and for the batteries uh, well I'm going to put three batteries down down here uh, two four six batteries here for a total of nine batteries and what I'm doing is I'm building these supports for the batteries I'm building this for each battery so uh, they don't move so in the basement of the, 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 the base of the uh, battery holder there's going to be screws like this which are going to hold the battery in place so they don't they don't jump with the jumps of the roads and they don't move and as you can see I have my first three batteries in place uh, let me see let me show you how this works this is for example one of these screws that are holding the batteries in place and there's the lid or the, the, the support that is going to keep them in there on the jumps of the road and so here we have one battery two batteries three batteries and my next six batteries are going to be in the back um, the controller Re measure and it's going to fit very well here. I just need to put a separator between the batteries and the controller to avoid any short circuits. But the controller is going to be there and the batteries are going to be there. So um, I just put in some plexiglass uh, between the, the place where the batteries are and the metal because there is, there is a lot of. Uh, if the batteries move a little, I don't want them to grind the plastic. With the, with the metal so I'd like them to sit on the plexiglass and they will have a smoother surface where to sit um, also it's important to finish all the cabling before this goes in place I mean these cables I need to, to do some of the cabling before I, I put the batteries on the top I also need like some signal also from the from the reverse that goes into the controller so it's important that I finish all the cabling before I put the batteries or and make it more difficult. Uh, other thing, this cable in the back. I got a tip from one of the uh, experts in the Electrofix of America. They say that if you make this cable like 10 feet long, it will make your motor run smoother and cooler. Apparently, just by putting a, a, a cable in the back that is about 10 feet long it will give you about 10% more range it's, it's a strange but they have proven that so that cable in the back I'm going to switch it to a 10 feet cable and that should give me a so uh, I'm changing this cable to be about 10 feet long and that should make the motor like 10% more efficient currently to experts from uh, electric vehicles of America we'll give it a try uh, also, very important, plan your batteries. You need to plan how your batteries are going to go because if you don't, at the time that you are putting the batteries, you're going to start wondering if you just put the battery in the positive down or the negative that, that way or this way. And, and once you plan in the cabling, 
you'll be able to just put the batteries right where they need to be and the, the orientation in positive or negative will be right. Um, also, I got this, uh, which is a proximity sensor. These are called proximity sensors. And there's a special proximity sensor that is being sold for uh, net gain motors, which is already made. Everything is already made to fit. So you don't have to be building any of the supports. The, those are more expensive than the ones that you buy in eBay, maybe. But it's worth it for me because I don't have to de do all these things that you need to do uh, if you don't buy them from Netgain. Also, this is important. They will work with one signal, two signal, three signal, or four signals. You can do as many as you can. In my case, I'm going to keep two signals because that's how the original tachometer in the vehicle work with two signals. Like every turn of the big shaft will be two turns of the uh, head shafts, and that's why I'm going to try to use this for the inboard original tachometer in the car. I don't know if I'll be able to. I don't know if this is compatible, but I'm going to try to use this for the original tachometer of the car with two signals. Uh, this pretty much goes into the motor like this. This goes um, to the original motor. I hope you can see it. You see the screws that aren't there? So this just sits right here. It may interfere if you have a front pulley. I'm not going to have one now, but this is already just made for, for net gain motors and it's already ready to, to fit in there. Um, Finally, I just want to mention that uh, um, I've been reading about cabling cable on the internet. It looks like you need to pick up the right cable for this car so they don't overheat. You need to use cable to double O. That is at least a thousand strands. I'm not. I don't really understand what that means, but the experts say that you have to use double o cable at least of what one thousand strands. Um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm ready to start cabling and putting batteries and I'll show you in the next video once the batteries are all inside and the controller is fixed and cabled and let's see how this works. Thank you. See you in the next video.